welcome to another installment of the Sequestered Chef and this time we're going to talk about how to make your life spicier in the kitchen of course. So um, I, am, I teach at the Wellness Center and I also teach at Mercer for the Employee and Staff Fitness Program. I am an ACE certified group fitness instructor and soon to be I hope a sports nutrition specialist. I am also SCW certified active aging movement coach as well as certified in active aging nutrition and um, hormones, nutrition, and metabolism. So all that means is that I spend a whole lot of time reading and researching about nutrition and healthy living so that I can torment my family and friends and get them to be healthy as well because I want them to live not only a long life but a long healthy life where they're active and able to enjoy their retirement and their grandchildren. So, um, today we're just going to talk about how to make that food that you've been making for the last eight weeks while we have been sequestered tastier. Um, I'm sure you're missing restaurant food that always seems to be just a little bit yummier than what you can make in your own kitchen and also um, perhaps you bought the stuff at Sam's and the big family packs because their meatloaf and chicken pot pie are way better than what you think you can make. Well, here's a little secret. There's a reason it tastes so good. It's because food manufacturers have meticulously researched just the right amounts of fat, salt, and sugar to put into those recipes. So that's not only good for your taste buds, but it goes straight to your the brain where the um, feel-good center is. So it says, buy more, buy more, eat more, eat more. So we're gonna get around that today and learn about spices and herbs so that you can make great taste and food at home without having to add those three elements into your cooking and you can stay healthy. And perhaps if your goal is to lose a couple of pounds, you can do that as well. You might decide you don't wanna eat in restaurants anymore. So I'm gonna give you a couple of facts about um, herbs and spices so that when the world does open back up, you can wow all your friends with what you learned while you were sequestered. So, first of all, spices come from the um, seeds, flowers, buds, bark, roots of plants, where herbs come from the leaves and the, um, the stems. And you can see in the background, I have a tiny little herb garden growing, so that's proof that you can grow herbs anywhere. I started those the week before um, we got sequestered, so they are right about eight weeks old and I've been eating off of them pretty regularly. I also have some uh, rosemary and thyme down on the ground that actually survived the winter and they're doing great. So I'm growing cilantro and mint and basil and two kinds of parsley and um, also some oregano. So um, last year I wasn't so good about taking care of them all summer. I got a little tired of it, but this year I have plans to um, preserve them so that I can use them all throughout the year. And I have a Pinterest page. Some of you might remember from other videos. I always make a Pinterest page to go with my videos. So if you'll just go and look for Fitter by Far, and it's got my logo with the green apple, and you'll find that. If you can't find it, you can email me at fitterbyfar at gmail, or you can find me on Facebook, and you can uh, just shoot me a message that way at Fitter by Far and I'll be glad to help you with whatever kind of spice and herb questions that you have. I wanted to show you, um, so for that, these little containers are kind of small, so I found this cute little thing at Amazon. It's a waterer. So you put a water bottle in the, just a regular 16 or even, I've got some eight ounce ones water bottles. I cut the end out of it and put it in the ground and it slowly waters them so that if I forget to do it, I've got it taken care of for a little bit. So here's another fact about um, spices and herbs, that um, they are responsible for political upheaval, for um, currency issues around the globe, for uh, international travel, and for discovering new lands, because that's actually what Christopher Columbus was looking for when he accidentally discovered America. So if everybody back then was that crazy about looking for spices, maybe that's something you should think about incorporating in your food because it certainly seems like a worthy endeavor to look at spices and herbs and see what they can do for you. So another um, fun fact about it is long, long ago, the um, plants 
that we call herbs and, and now spices, um, they had to find a way to survive. So they're actually toxins. They adapted the taste that they have because they wanted to be toxic to the little bugs and small creatures that ate them. Lo and behold, a human walked along and saw one and picked it up and took a bite of it and said, hey, that would taste really good on my steak. So back in the day, the hunters hunted and they didn't really have a way to preserve their food, but they found that the spices and the herbs you could put on the meat and it would help not only preserve it, but also it, when the meat didn't taste so great because there was no refrigeration, it would help mask that unpleasant flavor so they could make the meat last a little bit longer. And most of the spices and herbs, or at least the spices, are found in the equatorial regions of the world, like South and Central America and India and Indonesia, because it makes sense that in those regions which were hotter, things didn't tend to last. Okay, you. so before we get talking about specific herbs and spices, I just wanted to um, tell you about storage. So a lot of them come in either little cans like this or jars, and um, they can last there's plenty in there to last for quite a while, but they do go bad eventually. So if they're already ground, they are good for about six months to 12 months. And if they're whole, like whole peppercorns, then they can last for up to two years. But you need to maybe every six months go through and check your inventory. And if they have no smell or they have a funky smell, it's time to let them go. And what you wanna do is replace them with organic types. Uh, one brand that I have found that I believe is pretty organic is called Watkins. I, I can remember my grandmother used to talk about the Watkins man would come around. So apparently they used to sell it door to door, but you can find it in um, Walmart now. And there's also, I know of one person that sells it here in town. So if you need, if you're interested and you can't find it at Walmart, um, you can shoot me an email at fitterbyfar at gmail.com and I will put you in contact with my friend. Um, so you want to buy the organic because it's hard to find on the internet just exactly what's in or not in a spice but for the most part they do have additives in them one for anti-caking and others just for um, to, to prolong the life of it and um, FDA doesn't require you to put that on the label so if it doesn't say organic it's probably got chemicals in it and, and you would you know if you're trying to be very health conscious you might not want those chemicals um, so, like for instance, I love taco seasoning. This one does list, so that makes me wonder how much is in there if they actually did list it. But there's several ingredients on this one that you might not want. And um, on my Pinterest page, you can find a recipe to make a Mexican spice blend. You can also find Italian and um, Chinese five spices on there. And uh, there's a couple others, in fact, Two of them that are kind of interesting are the, um, for tea, for the chai tea that like you can get at the coffee houses. Um, that there's a recipe for that. And my favorite is Moroccan coffee, which the first time that I ever had that was at the, um, at Epcot at the Moroccan restaurant. And maybe it was just because I was in the happiest place on earth that it tasted so good, but um, I have made it at home and it, it is, it's really delicious. So if you're looking for something different for coffee and you're not going to the coffee houses right now, you might want to give that a try. I think there's about five different spices in there. Um, so uh, back to storage, don't store it near your stove or your oven because the heat will affect it. Same, don't store them near in direct sunlight. And don't even store them near the sink because the humidity coming off of if you're running hot water or, or if any water splashes in them, it can mold it. And that would kind of be tragic because they're not cheap. I want to show you this. If you want to try some kind of spice and you're not sure if you're going to like it and you don't want to invest in a whole box, you can go to Fresh Market and get little bags like this. And you can just get small quantities and they don't cost nearly as much. And that gives you a chance to experiment. Um, I had done it. One last thing about storing um, your or taking care of your spices. When you're cooking, just naturally you would take it and dump it in while you're cooking if you're going to want to sprinkle some food in while you're cooking. But don't do that because the steam coming up off of whatever you're cooking goes right into that container and it will mildew your spices that you have invested in. So um, it's better to go ahead and measure it out into like a little bowl or something, mix up however many you're gonna mix and then sprinkle the spices or herbs 
from the bowl into the cook thing to preserve your spices for as long as you can. I wanted to show you this too. You can also buy um, dried herbs at the grocery store this way. And you, I just keep them in my refrigerator and um, they'll last a pretty long time, but again, probably not as long as the dried ones. But if you're not growing any and you want something a little closer to fresh, that's a good option. So let's talk about some specific herbs and what I do with them. First of all, I use this container to drink um, lemon mint water. So I got it from Amazon and it's got this little insert and I cut a couple of wedges of lemon, put in there. And then I take some mint leaf like this. I just cut off a sprig and crush those leaves a little bit, break them up and then stick them in to on the top and then add water. That's all there is to it. So if you're trying to cut out soda or you are um, trying to just drink more water, that's a good way to, to try something different if you just don't like plain water. And while we're on the topic of water, um, one of the recommendations for how much water to drink is you take your weight and divide it in half and that's how many ounces you would drink. So if you weighed 150 pounds, that 75 is half and 75 ounces is about four and a half water bottles of the little 16 ounce water bottle. So that's definitely doable for you. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is um, this. I've got a little story for you. This will be um, the last one. Well, actually I don't have any um, cilantro, so I can tell you the story, but I can't show it to you because it's just started growing again. Um, cilantro is kind of odd. First of all, that it's an herb and a spice. If you use the seeds, it is a spice and it's called coriander. And if you use um, the leaves and the stems, it's called um, cilantro. I'm sorry, this is not cilantro. Um, and, and it's used in a lot of Mexican cooking. But the fun fact about that is you either have a gene that makes it taste like soap, so you hate it, or you don't have that gene, you have another gene that makes it taste delicious. So um, you could prepare something for your family and some of you hate it and think it tastes nasty and the other half of you think it tastes delicious and, and that's why it's because of your DNA. Um, kind of like, um, I don't know if you know about asparagus, some people have a certain reaction to it and can smell things and other people cannot and that, that's all based on your genes. So one last story about this. This one is rosemary. So a long time ago, I didn't know anything about herbs either. Didn't know what this was for sure. And um, I told you the story a while ago about how um, herbs started out being toxic to little bugs. So here's my little bug story. So when I was um, just started where I'm working now, we had a uh, convention in New Orleans. So I went to New Orleans and on the last night, a group of us were going to go out to eat and so of course you know you want to try to impress your friend and co-workers so I was on my P's and Q's trying to be nice and and be a great co-worker and so we had dinner and then we ordered dessert and the dessert was um, key lime pie which I love key lime pie it's second to chocolate so out comes my key lime pie and this little thing that looked like a baby pine tree was sticking out of the top for decoration and I thought oh my goodness that is so cute I didn't know what it was so somebody told me that it was a, a herb so I stuck my face down to smell it and just as I did there was an inchworm right there going like that trying to find the next place to land and I didn't know whether to scream or shove the pile I'm freaked out by worms so it, it was terrible first of all one of the most disgusting creatures in the world was inches from me and second it was on my dessert and I really don't like to turn away dessert so I had a, a, a moment of bravery what was I gonna do I think I ate two bites I think I got this off of my pie and I ate two bites and I couldn't do the rest so there's my story about little bugs trying to eat herbs so I hope that you have learned some things today I hope I've challenged you to at least go and try some herbs and spices and, and Go see what you've got, throw out the old stuff so that when you do try something, um, you, you've got a tasty amount of spices and herbs and, and it actually does change the flavor and you can tell how, much, how good it is. Um, I hope I've encouraged you to maybe try to grow at least one or two herbs on your own. If nothing else, you can um, just try the basil because um, I've cut that up in little pieces and put it on my salad and, and 
wow, it just changes the taste of your salad so much. So if you only do two, I would say mint and basil. And just give those two a try this summer. See how you do with it. Um, go check out my Pinterest page. Again, it's fitter by far. The little green apple is my logo. And uh, see what you do. And um, please send me some comments and let me know how you like the video and how you like cooking with herbs and spices. Have a great day. Bye.